Hi, in this example, we're going to use reinforcement learning to control a biped robot using uh, six torque based actuators in the six articulations shown in here hip, knee, ankle, and for both legs using a couple of uh, reinforcement learning agents which we're going to compare one against the other. One is TDPG and the other one is TD3. One is an extension of the other. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. The first step is initializing the parameters and there's a script in the example and you can see that has the dimensions of some of the robot parts there the position the mass the gravity uh, the initial position initial angles and then use uh, inverse kinematics to compute the theta based on the dimensions of the legs and other initialization factors so let's just run this and with this we will be able to open the model this is the name of the model and uh, we're going to take a closer look at the model later uh, once uh, we create the agent because when we can hit control D on the model we can see the dimensions and uh, things are easier to understand that way right now you can see that we have the agent block in red uh, because we haven't created it and you can see in the right that we have the physical model of the robot using Simscape in the left we have the calculation of the observation reward and is done the termination signal and also this is the action the action is going to be a vector of six values for the six torques of the six actuators we're going to have a observation of 29 uh, including that includes the previous action but uh, mostly is the the position uh, a angle velocity uh, of the torso and also the position the angular angular uh, angle and angular velocity of each of the actuators so for the reward uh, we're going to see in a moment what the reward is and the termination signal how it is based okay so you can see that the previous action is taken into consideration to using this unit delay this is basically taking the action from the previous step okay so let's go back to the example to the article again in which describes the observations and you can see that is going to be 29 observations uh, the, the the forces is going to be as i mentioned before is going to be the torques uh, for each of the three uh, actuators so uh, the torque is going to be between negative three and three newtons but it's going to be normalized between negative one and one so the 29 observations of the agent uh, will be the the lateral and vertical y and c respectively position of the torso the x position is not co uh, used because what matters uh, the x is for the forward uh, the way that you're moving and for that one uh, taking into consideration only the velocity seems to be enough so only the velocity is considered so we have the x y and c uh, translation velocity and we have the jaw pitch roll of the torso and the corresponding angular velocity and the angular position and velocities of the three joints of each leg uh, and also we have the action from the previous step and then uh, for the vertical uh, position the, the z if it is below 0 0.1 it means that you fall so you gotta uh, the the episode stops in there also you're gonna get a negative a penalty for that for for going down and if you go beyond one meter meter in the y in the lateral direction also is that that you step out of, the, of of your road so you stop the episode so you can see here that a uh, that the robot has to be walking from this line so if you step aside from this too much then the episode finish and and is considered a failure okay so this is the reward function and you can see that uh, we got a positive reward for the forward velocity so if you're moving forward it means that the robot is walking so that's good for each step in which you don't fall down you get a penalty based on the sample time and final time and you get a penalty the the more that you deviate in the lateral direction and get a penalty if you're going down in the c direction and also you get a penalty for effort uh, this is the previous action so that's basically uh, your reward and again uh, for reinforcement learning environments the reward the observation and the action are the interface between the agent and environment uh, so we have to properly 
define them and that's what we're going to do right now so the first is the 29 uh, observations and which are numerical spec which means that they are going to be contiguous back, uh, continuous values so the agents that we're using ddpg and td3 are uh, operate in both contigu continuous uh, observation and continuous action spaces okay you can see that there's no limits for the observations but for the torque we have six values for the six actuators and there's a limit between negative one and one so we normalize the torques and okay so now to create the environment you can notice that this is the RL agent so to get the path to the block is the name of the block dash RL agent so that's how you get the the path to the block and that's what we're doing here you can see the name of the model RL agent so this is the path for your block that's your block now with the block with the name of the model and the object a uh, observation object that we just created and the action object that we just created we create the simulink um, based a uh, reinforcement learning environment RL simulink environment that's the name of the function then for that environment we have a, me a, a property for the reset function so for each episode this function is going to be called to randomize and reinitialize some of the parameters of the configuration and the example has a function for that and you can see uh, if you search here you can see that the, le the length of the legs are fixed and are provided and you can search for rounding here and you can see that the there's some randomization and based on that the rest of the things are derived again you have to use uh, inverse kinematics to compute the the angles of the legs so that's going to be your reset function and these are the length of the legs parameters and the height so now uh, we're going to create the agent and for that there's going to be a couple of methods in both of them these are the ddpg and the td3 these, these are functions provided by the by the example and in order to do proper comparison between the two the author is using almost the same, par same parameters but since we have different agents the parameters there are some parameters that one agent that the other one doesn't not have but they're trying to keep them the same for example you can see that this count factor 0 0.99 is the same mini batch size is the same 256 one a uh, one to the to a a 1 million experience buffer length a target smooth factor a target smooth factor should be yeah it's basically the same so there's more parameters in the td3 but and the networks are going to be the same <coughs> and you can see that this function that is part of the example as well is going to create the networks in the same way notice that the ddpg only uses one critic and one actor while the while the td3 uses two critics but they are creating it the same way you can see here basically it's going to create the fully connected layers a relu it's very similar to other videos uh, in, in this channel so you can see them for more detail I, we're just going to see use the analyze network to see the how these networks are once you have the networks you have some optimizations for learning rate and you can see the critic and actor of the opti action optimizations the learning rate are the same you can see that they're the same between the dpg and td3 so with that you pass it to the agent options in both cases so uh, notice that uh, for both agents we're using the rlq value function and let's go to the article and i'm going to put this reference in the video so in the reinforcement learning agents page you can see that both of them the td3 and the dpg are off policy agents that take actor and critic and both of them operate in the contiguous space you can see that this is the contiguous action, action space both of them work the same uh, with that and you can see a dp is a more basic uh, 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 alternative to the td3 so they use the same R rl q value function for the critic and continuous deterministic actor for the actor you can see ddpg here and td3 so they use the same functions and if you go to their pages you can see that the 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 learning functions are almost the same this is the function to compute the 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 current reward so you 
have the current reward accumulated so far plus the one predicted by the target critic and you can see that it's the same except that since you have multiple critics you have to take the minimum of the critics by having two critics uh, uh, basically it helps uh, statistically it has better statistical properties to have different uh, critics because you are not based only on, on one of them so that gives an advantage to the td3 but as you can imagine it's going to be harder to train perhaps we're going to see in a moment so you can see that the, to train the critics is exactly the same this is the formula to train the critics the loss the, the loss for the reward and the gradients uh, for the actor uh, are the same except that you take the minimum uh, the minimum of a uh, reward from from the critics uh, the, and you, you of course want to maximize reward you want to maximize reward but by taking the minimum reward of the critics you're uh, gonna be a little bit conservative and that it seems that it helps in this case and you we, we're gonna see at the end of the video why okay so the the updating of the target critics and target actor parameters is basically the same between the two yeah this has more information here but it's basically the same okay so let's go back to the to here so now let's just put a breakpoint here we're gonna create uh, yeah basically we just uh, use one of these for either the dpg or the t3 we're just gonna create the t3 and i place a breakpoint and that will allow me to take a look at the actor network first We can see the actor network is pretty simple. You have 29 observations. You have a, co a, few, uh, a set of fully connected layers that interleave with ReLU layers. And at the end, we go from 400, 300, and 6, which are the, the torques for, for the actuators. We go from observation to ac action. That's the actor. The, the critic, both the, we, bo the both critics are exactly the same. So both of them are gonna take observation as input, but also the action. The observation is gonna go through a set of fully connected layers, ReLU layers, from 400 to 300, and then the action is gonna go straight through 300, and then once both of them are in 300, they can be added, and at the end, the 300 turns into one, which is the expected long-term reward for that particular observation and action. Okay, so with that, uh, we have an untrained TD3 agent. So to train it, to actually train it, you have to uh, com get the training options. Uh, you can see in here that usually we stop when we have a given reward for a number of straight episodes. But in here, we're gonna compare the DDPG and TD3. Uh, so to be fair, we're gonna train them for the same number of episodes, which are 2000. So the stopping criteria is not going to be the reward this time. It's going to be the episode count. And the episode count is 2,000. So we're going to stop on 2,000. I'm not going to run this because I'm not going to do training. But notice that in the training options, they are using use parallel and asynchronous mode. So this is basically that the a, the, there's going to dispatch a set of workers. And the workers are going to compute the experiences. And the, the experiences are going to be sent to the server, which is only one. The, the, synch the, the synchronizing uh, a be a be a program is going to take those experiences and it's going to update the networks in the, in, in the, in the agents. Okay. So now uh, with here, well, the training, you can see that it took a, about 30,000 seconds. I think that that is maybe eight, 16 hours or something like that. It's a lot of time, and I'm gonna do it here. Uh, but you can see that this is the DDPG agent, and it got an, an average reward of 90. And then you have the TD3, which has an, has an average reward of 300, uh, 242, so it's superior uh, in that sense. So instead of training them, you, you're training with the agent that we just created, either, D, either DDPG or TD3, the environment that we created for Simulink and the training options uh, above this. With that, we just call train and we basically let it train for many hours. And you might imagine, okay, this is painful letting it train for eight, 16 hours, but uh, 
but imagine that you're trying to develop the formulas uh, to train this robot uh, manually. It, it could take uh, days of uh, development work. So it's better to let the computer work for 8, 16, uh, even 24 hours rather than having a developer uh, manually coming up with the formulas to make this robot uh, walk. So it's, it's basically worth it. So uh, the, uh, we get the networks already trained, so we're not going to get them yet. We're going to see how the TD on train td 3 agent performs. So for that, uh, we set the seed to zero, and then we execute these commands. Okay, let's uh, run them with the untrained agent. Okay, let's run them. My bad. Okay, that'll take us here, and you can see that it's running right now. It's not doing anything because it's untrained. It doesn't know anything. It's maybe try to move some articulation, but event eventually it falls down. Not in this one because it's quite random, but let's try it uh, again. It's gonna lose its balance and it's gonna fall down. Actually, it doesn't do it this time, so let me uh, do something here. Okay, now let's run it back. That's uh, basically setting the seed to zero. Yeah, it's basically not doing anything because it's not trained. Okay, but anyway, so sometimes it, it falls down. Sometimes it just doesn't do anything, but that, that the point is that it doesn't do, I mean, that's why you get a bad reward at the beginning, because it doesn't do anything or it falls down. So let's take first the DDPG agent. So I load the agent and the model, the model already has the agent in it. So whatever agent it is in the workspace, you can see the agent here, whatever agent is in the workspace, that's the one the one that the model is going to pick up. So just by loading it into a workspace, the base workspace, the model is going to pick it up. So let's run this again and see what happens. Okay, now it's going to work and the DDPG is going to have a particular style, uh, each one. This deviates a little bit to the left, to the right, and it kind of inclines, it's, it's kind of goofy uh, walking. And now let's take the TD3, the train TD3. We're going to load it into a workspace and the simulic model is going to pick it up. So we're going to just run the, the simulation method from the environment with maximum steps 400. These are the sim options and the agent. We provide the agent and the environment and that's it. Okay, so let's run it again. Now with the TD3, this is TD3. This is going to work slower. Uh, he learned to work slower to be more efficient. And it doesn't work funny, it doesn't kind of incline to the left or right. It, it just works straight. So you can see the advantage of having a uh, multiple critics and taking the minimum, being conservative between the two. That's one of the main advantages of TD3 over DDPG. Okay, so now it, finally we're going to get some... Uh, this is a script that's from the example to compare the performance between the two. And as, as we saw in the training charts, the the, re the average reward of the TD3 is superior to... This is the average reward. And you can see that uh, the, the TD3 performs better in average reward. This is standard deviation. But the Q0 is the estimated reward at the beginning of the episode. Notice that the DPG, the DPG is overestimating the reward. And this one, TD3, is being more conservative. Okay, uh, so we saw that the TD3 is a superior agent in this particular problem. And we saw how to make a robot work with just uh, a few hours of training, less than one day of training uh, in reinforcement learning. Okay, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching.